Hey everybody, it's Mike Jeffers, ChicagoJazz.com, and this is episode 86 of Jazz. This week, I am here with Juan Pastor. We're gonna be talking about his group, his gig coming up at the Green Mill on December 22nd, 23rd, plus he's gonna be leaving town in March. So we're gonna get the scoop and we'll be right back. Hey everybody, we are back, episode 86, live from Johnny O's here in Bridgeport, 35th Street and Morgan. It's a famous hot dog stand slash liquor store slash grocery store in the heart of Bridgeport in Chicago. Juan, are you enjoying the incredible jazz vibe you get here at Johnny O's Hot Dogs? I mean, no, nothing thinks more jazz than hot dogs, hot <laughs> right? American, <laughs> American, or no, Chicago, Chicago style hot dogs. Here, yes, absolutely, and I'm impressed because you are eating it, and he got the Chicago style. I don't even go Chicago style because I don't like tomatoes. What's going on with that? <laughs> What's going on with me, man? I got lots of issues. But anyways, that's another show. So Juan, he stopped by. He's got a show coming up at the Green Mill December 22nd and 23rd with his band Chinchano. Did correct. I say that correct? You said it right. And of course... This group, you and I first talked probably about a year, year and a half ago. I mean, we've talked on and off throughout the past couple of years. But last year, a year ago, you were at, featured at the Chicago Jazz Festival. Correct, yeah. It's and this is a group years. that you started, right? Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> now, you started it when you came to Chicago? Yeah, uh, sh pretty much Chinchano was uh, the first group that I started in, in Chicago. And it started almost uh, as a necessity to, to play some of the music that I was hearing. Uh, there was not a lot of planning when I, when I first thought about it, doing it. Just like, hey, I have this music, I want to try it, and start calling some musicians. Uh, soon enough, I realized it was having some gigs, and the band was rolling. Well, let's let's back up a little bit, because I know I jumped into that, but I mean, you're, you're originally from Peru? Correct. And how did you end up coming to Chicago? To the Midwest, huh? To the Midwest, yes. That's got... probably not the first place <laughs> that you would have thought that you would have come. I was tricked. I'm not going to lie. I was really tricked. <laughs> Were you? I, I was. I'm this not going to lie. This is good. This is, this is good. <laughs> so uh, when I first thought about moving to the United States, it was mostly because of music. Uh, school was something important that I thought I need to get a, a career in music. So I started looking into universities. Um, I applied to many schools, and one of the schools that I got accepted were Northern Illinois University, uh, which I am so thankful to that I went there. I had a great experience. But I remember when I was uh, when I applied for it, they were like, "Oh yeah, it's like in the Chicago area." So I was like, <laughs> "Chicago, major city, city." I never thought about opening a map and realizing that was actually like 60 miles away from Chicago. Well, it's in the area. It was in the area, of course. <laughs> in the area. Of course, when you move to the states, you don't have a car right away. So I was kind of just in the cal for a period of time, which you know, eventually I got a car and started getting yeah. some gigs, moving to the city after that. Now that was with uh, Ron Carter was out there, right? Correct. Yeah, I happened to be. I was able to play in his band. That was a great experience. Yeah. And who was teaching drums out there then? I I, I was lucky enough to study with uh, one of uh, the best percussionists that I know, Greg Beyer, uh, Robert Chappell, uh, and Rodrigo Villanueva. You're already playing, obviously, when you came up from Peru. So when you came up, I mean, were you playing, did you have jazz chops, or was it was it more, you know, I mean, it's not Afro-Cuban, it's not this, what's the, like the, the proper tor term for sure. like that music from Peru? Um, well, when I moved here, I wanted, I wanted to learn more about jazz drumming. I was very interested about jazz drumming before I moved here because of friends in Peru who were jazz musicians or who were listening to jazz or giving records. So I got interested in that. Uh, of course, the music in Peru, was jazz is not something from the culture, even though it's growing uh, rapidly right now. Uh, the music from there is a lot of popular music. Uh, there was uh, Afro-Peruvian music, is the music from the country actually listens to uh, popular music uh, from the region. There's a lot of salsa, a lot of cumbia. So when I moved here, those were all good things in, in a way because it led me to a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I'd never consider myself uh, a great percussionist, but I was getting a lot of calls in percussion, so it really allowed me to work on my craft of playing percussion. Uh, so it was a good experience. Uh, but mostly I did my jazz drumming, I guess, in the United States. I, I knew a little bit of I knew rock drumming and other things, but yeah, you know you're at Northern and you're getting all that experience. What was uh, you know some of the groups maybe some influences when you started coming into the city that you really just clung on to and said, "Well, man, I got to check this guy out or that guy." Well, after I finished school at Northern, I uh, I actually went to do my master's 
uh, DePaul University where I got to study with uh, two amazing drummers, uh, Bob Ramish and Dana Hall. Um, both of them were great in my experience there. And yeah. I happened that my last year at DePaul, I had a whole year uh, spending it with Dana Hall and who happened to be one of the most amazing drummers that I, I was already checking out before I went to the school. Yeah. So I think I got like a nice touch uh, during my, with, le- doing my master, just like learning really from, from a master of jazz drumming. What would your advice be for somebody getting out of college or somebody in college that wants to get on the scene since... Well, I think it's like, you, you have heard this before, it's you gotta go out. You're just like, I feel like currently I still go out, I try to to go to sessions. I, I have got comment from other musicians like, I mean, I always see you in the sessions, uh, it's good. I was like, yeah, of course it's, it's nice to go out because I feel like if you don't go out and play, um, I don't know, there's, especially for me, there's some days that I don't get to play a lot of drums all day just because of our things that I have to do. I try to write more music these days, so just different sure. commitments that you might have of teaching. So sometimes like going to a session is very like, okay, I get to play and just kind of go. Um, and of course the interaction with musicians is always good. Uh, it's now that people know that you're around just because they see you. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know social media makes, okay, everybody's, if you're active in social media, everybody knows that you exist, but I think it's very important also to to just show your face, see music, not necessarily just go to the session to play. I, I try to to see as much music as I can. It's, well, the thing is, there's a lot of good music in there's Chicago. A ton. There's a so ton. there's never. It's not even that hard. You just got to be. There's better weekends than other ones, but there's usually a good show. Now, what's happening in Peru? Now, is there is there a big scene in Peru, or is it mainly you know with the university you're going to? Is there are there clubs? What's the scene like? Well, I think it's a combination of uh, the universities uh, that are in Lima now, that have the music faculty has helped to create a scene of students. And that's where you're going to um, Lima. I'm going to Lima. That's okay. where I'm going to be teaching. Um, but the scene in the, the jazz scene in Peru is, is it's been it's been going on for for a little bit now. Uh, I, I want to say like from the early even 60s, there was a lot of uh, jazz musicians uh, in Peru who were very passionate with whatever was happening. It's, it's now with, with the social media and the internet, YouTube, it's, it's very easy to know what is happening these days. Because I'm amazed sometimes when I go to Peru and I hear these musicians sounding like musicians in New York, where I'm like, how do you sound like this? And it's like, oh yeah, I've been checking out these saxophonists yeah. because there's Spotify, which is great, uh, Where which also can be tricky because a lot of people are skipping parts of jazz where I feel like when I when I came here a lot of people were like listen to the roots so I think it's uh, I feel like I'm gonna be able to to explain some young musicians hey but there's also this stuff that is very important the the, the scene in Peru is good it's not a bad scene it's small but it's growing uh, pretty fast um, so I'm excited to to be part of of the process yeah. of you know making the scene grow a lot and I'm planning on bringing musicians from here over there as well as I'm planning on coming here yeah whenever I can December 22nd and 23rd correct at the Green Mill mm-hmm. Chinchano Chin, Chinchano Chinchano we're I playing on correctly. the 22nd and 9 to 1 on the 23rd Saturday it's always a little early 8 to midnight 8 to midnight all the information is at wampastore.com we're gonna mm-hmm. link that up below yep. and uh, you're going to Peru in March, I'm going so to you're Peru. still going to be here playing. Yeah, call me. So- <laughs> <laughs> He's not subbing anything out yet, guys, so all the musicians watching right now, put March 1st on your calendar to start making those phone calls to find out <laughs> if they, you can get his gigs. But um, anything else coming up that we should talk about? Obviously the mill, but anything else you got um, on the horizon here? Yeah, I mean, I always like to see what's going on in Chicago. Um I'm a big fan of a pianist, Rob Clearfield. Yep. He's a good friend of mine, though. Um, but I also love his playing. And yeah. I always check out what he's up to. He put this amazing record not too long ago called Island. I believe it was a trio record I just put in my car and had it for so long. I know he's doing, he recorded a new CD and he's doing like a pre-release show. I know the album won't be released until next year. I think it's on the 26th of February. I looked it up. Uh, but he's doing a show on the 21st, 21st yeah. at La Salle Church. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe that is in La Salle, uh, 1136 North La Salle Street, uh, North La Salle Boulevard. And it's, I think, at 8 p.m.? 8 p.m., yeah, 7 I think p.m. so, 7, 7 p.m. PM. Mm-hmm. And you said that, uh, actually, because we were talking about this before and I wrote a couple of notes for myself down, uh, Rob Clearfield with a solo piano thing, mm-hmm. but it's a preview for his actual CD release, yeah. which is... 
which is called Wherever You're Starting From. That's the name of the recording. And I guess, I think you were telling me that you can actually buy the CD that night. That night. So go see way Rob. Ahead of, mm -hmm. Way ahead. Go see Rob on Thursday and then Chinchino. Friday He's Saturday. got your whole weekend planned already, <laughs> folks. I mean, just don't, don't even worry. So that's Rob Clearfield. We'll link that up right below. Mm -hmm. And now that leads me into, because I always have my three picks now, so I have to do my three picks. Sure. And uh, you've probably seen my disclaimer, but I always have to say my disclaimers so that I don't get angry emails from anybody. These are my three picks of shows that I think, if you're looking for somewhere to go, someone to see, some cool new venue maybe you haven't been to, these are three shows that I think a casual music fan, hardcore jazz fan would totally dig. But by no means, here's the disclaimer, no means are these the only shows happening in Chicago. Now, if you have a show coming up and you are watching this, leave it in the comment below if I don't mention it. Because lots of people are seeing these videos and feel free to hack in and promote your show. So please do. And of course, DM me. Send me the info, and maybe I'll try to get you on a future show as well. All right, so here are my three picks. Feel free to chime in. I have a feeling that you know who most of these people are. Sure. I have a feeling that you know exactly who this first band is, because if you don't, I'm going to be very frightened. I think, <clears throat> so my first pick, December 22nd, 23rd, of course, Juan Pastor, oh, Chinchano, nothing. Green Mill, Right? I mean, no-brainer. Got to see it. No-brainer. You have to see that. Good time. And let me just tell you, from a uh, from my point of view, if you want to hear some serious grooving and improvisation, this is the guy right here. You got to go check this out. December 22nd, Thanks. 23rd. I'm telling you, man. I love it. Okay, so that's at the mill. December 21st through the 24th, Dee Alexander and her quartet, they're going to be at the Jazz Showcase. Mm. If you have not seen Dee Alexander perform live, the Jazz Showcase, Intimate Space, that's the place to go. The 22nd through the tw 21st through the 24th, Thursday through Sunday, and of course, 4 p.m. on Sunday, all ages. It's the Kids Matinee, Save the Children, Joe Siegel will be there, 4 p.m., 12 and under, get in free. So Dee Alexander Quartet, Thursday through Sunday, that's the spot to go. Now... I don't know if you know this group because I'm not totally familiar with it, but I checked it out online. But it's happening at the California Clipper, mm -hmm. and it is the Time Steen Quartet, and they are playing the Charlie Brown Christmas. So I oh. figured I'd throw that in. That's kind of cool, and they're yeah. doing it at the Clipper. It's December 19th, so it's the Time Steen Quartet, and they're going to be playing the Charlie Brown Christmas, which is awesome. Vince yeah. Guaraldi. It's, it's one of my favorites, so if you have a chance. And also, I think cool it's place. kind of, it's very California cool. California Clipper, yeah, I like it. You've played there a bunch yeah, of times, yeah, probably, yeah. right? They have, place. they have lots of live music there. And and I I mentioned them before, a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, the, we always talk about the mill being like that old-time spot, that mm -hmm. place that, you know, everybody goes, Al Capone used to hang out with. Well, you know, California Clipper, man, that place has been around since the 30s as well. So you feel like you're walking into a time warp as well. So it's a very cool neighborhood spot. Definitely check that out. So that's December 19th. We made it. Made it. We made it through the show, man. Again, Juan, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Hopefully, you enjoy the hot dog. Oh, the hot dog. And the fries, <laughs> and the beer, and the waters. Water. And of course, all the information on every show in Chicago is on ChicagoJazz.com. And if we don't see you somewhere out this weekend, hopefully, I will see you somewhere out on the scene.